YouTube, this is Bill McFadden with a sort of an expose of the Hans Zimmer percussion by Spitfire. And I'm going to start by showing you the setup. I'm going to add an instrument track, which is complete control because this library is NKS compatible. Sorry for the delay there. Um, and because it's NKS compatible, it'll work with the native instrument NKS compatible keyboards. And so when we're in complete, and I'll go ahead and select the Hans Zimmer. And there it is. If you open it up in regular contact, then you won't have the advantage of seeing the uh, NKS features, which include a lighted keyboard. So the first thing I'll do is load the patch, the Hans Zimmer percussion, which is a <clears throat> patch that gives you a sampling of the different instruments and you'll see in just a minute what that looks like. It's actually loading the preset right now. Here's the progress. Okay, so you see we have this grid of, right here we have the Tycho's and then next to that, the paper gens, bombos, surdos, low booms, low boom gallery, and so on. So you have a four by four grid of about 16 different instruments. But there's more. Okay. So what I'm going to do next, and the reason I've done it this way, is so if you, once you open complete control, you'll see how to get to the regular contact graphic interface. So you go to view, then you go down to edit view, and I'll, voila, now we have our normal contact interface. So primarily it shows you the keyboard. Now, right down here we have, they call it C1. Now, the way you can tell what Tycho is being referenced in this particular Hans Zimmer percussion interface is you'll notice there's a C1 key which corresponds to this key down here and then a D1 which is the high hit whoops so there's your high hit and in order to get that I actually had to pull my uh, keyboard down an octave by using the octave minus and octave plus options to reach that on the keyboard. So there's your C1, which they call it. It's actually, it could be C0 or even, oh, actually it is C minus one, okay. So it's really low. That's why I had to bring the keyboard down an octave. Then you have your D1 and then your E1 and then your F1. So you actually have four of the Tyco patches in the Hans Zimmer percussion interface. Now it is possible to get all of the different articulations of the Tycho's, and you can see they have quite a few. In addition to the ensemble hit, there's an ensemble roll, and then there's a high roll and a high pulley and so on. But it's actually easy to get all those articulations. The Hans Zimmer percussion articulation just gives you a sampling of each of the, in each of the instrument groups. So if we go to paper gens, you'll notice that G minus one, which is right, whoops, right there, in green, by the way, they alternate colors as you go through the, six, the four by four matrix. 
So now we're on green, and then A1, A minus one is actually the next one they have, which is a solo hit. So they've just sampled a couple of, of patches, in some case four, from each of the instruments, bombos. So we go from um, green to yellow, and there you see the, the B1 is the hard hit, and then, or it's actually B minus one, and then C0 is the soft hit, and D0 is the um, hand hit, and so on. So that's how it's set up. And notice the, we've, we're at plus one here. If we go, now watch, we have a purple interface, or purple colors at the top of the keyboard. So if I go plus one, which moves it up an octave to plus two, notice there were, there were keys beyond the purple that we saw, sort of a pink color here. And then if we hit it one more time, we see there's actually a couple here, and that would actually correspond to the last cell in the four by four matrix. So you can see we have the Piata B6, which is right there. And then we have the anvil at C7. So it does give you a sampling, and because this is just trying to give you an idea of what's going on, let's go ahead and uh, start back at one, and I'll just go through the patches, and just for the sake of time, I'll just play them. So there's That's the Tycho patch, C minus one. They have four from that, and then we'll go to the Paper Johns, which is in the green. They have two patches from that. We'll go to the Bombos, which is the yellow patches. And then after that, we get go into sort of a light purple, which would be the Sordos. And then the low booms would be the orange patches. And the ones that have key keys next to them are the ones that are actually being played. And then the blue would be the next one up, Low Boom Gallery. There's four of those patches. By the way, the, uh, the way they have it set up, we're just using the, we're not using the black keys, we're just using the white keys of the keyboard. And then after that, bass drum, Then we have the gong drum gallery. And then the dolls in purple. Then the darbuka in orange. And then the snare in green. Actually, it's, there's only, it's actually a light blue. And next to that, we have green, which is the Tombex. So here's the Tombex. And then after that, <clears throat> the boom bands. Actually, that's still the uh, Tombex. So I believe now we're into the uh, boom bands. Then you have your buckets, purple. So now I have to go up an octave. So here's where so we have a, and I actually have to change my transport button on the keyboard. Oops. So there we are. Now the tam tams. Sounds, that sounds like a tam tam. And then metals. And so you can see we just have the uh, Piatis and the Anvil at C7. So that's one of the patches. Now, I'll go ahead and close this one down. And then you'll get an idea of the layout. Um, so over here we have Bass Drum Gallery. So when you click on that, it loads up all your bass drum patches. And as you see, they're mapped to these yellow keys. And if you have the contact NKS 
uh, compatible keyboard, it'll be lit up on your keyboard as well with the yellow. And so you're going through all articul articulations and it tells you what they are. The C1 and the D2, which is actually a ninth above the C1. Then you have the E1, which is a soft hit. E2, which is an octave above that as a soft roll. And then G1. And then some of these patches uh, contain two keys or more. Because you don't have, you, got, you go from C1, and then notice there's nothing that says C2, but that's part of the C1 patch. So you can do that kind of thing with the same drum. And then we have the E1 patch, which is a soft. And there's two key strokes for that one and so on. And in addition to the bass drum, you have the, the bum booze which is sort of like a bamboo kind of thing. And um, and then we can go into the uh, boom bands. And we have a lot of stuff lit up, as you see. So that would be your, again, these, you're going from C1, and then a next articulation is E1. Then it goes <clears throat> up to F2, and G2, and then A2, B2, and so on. I'll just play through the articulation so you can hear what it sounds like. And then the next one we have after the bamboo are the buckets. And so they're all in purple. And again, your, your black keys aren't giving us anything, nothing associated with those. Here's the Darbucks. So you get the complete articulations of the Darbucks. And again, when it says C1, it's actually a C1 and C2. E1 is E1 and F1. G1 would be G1 and A1. And then B1 also includes uh, C2. So you can use two fingers to play quickly as opposed to just trying to do it with one finger, which is pretty typical for drum patches. And then we have the doles. And here we are. And then we have the epic hits. C1, C2. And then after that, we have the gong drum gallery. I'm just trying to go through the different patches so you can uh, get an idea what it sounds like. So here we have the gong drum gallery. So C2 is a soft roll. Sorry, C2 is a hard roll, and then it says C2 is a soft roll. I'm not sure. And I guess this library does take a little bit of processing because my uh, VST performance is um, getting a little high with some of these patches. Um, I could go ahead and uh, give us a little more breathing room by... Increasing the buffer size. OK, 
Okay, and so next one, we looked at Hans Zimmer percussion. Now, the Hans Zimmer percussion unmapped. There are no key switches, if you want to call them that, for choosing patches. But it allows you to customize your own key switches. So if I want, say, a Tyco ensemble hit, I just click on that and then hit a key on the, my keyboard, and it automatically assigns those two keys to an ensemble hit for Tycho's. And then suppose I want to go over to Certo's and do the same thing, ensemble hit. So I click on that, then I choose two keys anywhere I want. I'll go ahead and choose it on the E, which automatically generates E and F. And now we have the, the ensemble hit from the Certo's. Certo's. And suppose I want to do a metal. So then I can go ahead and do an anvil. Just click on anvil, then hit any key on the keyboard that's not already used. And you have your two keys for your anvil. So you can customize it any way you want. That's what's nice about the unmapped um, patch. And then we have the Hans Zimmer trumpet, or sorry, timpani. Now, in this case, they do use the black keys, so we can... Because the timpani does play pitches, so you need the um, chromatic capability. And then after that, we have the low boom gallery. So, and those are the patches that are, would be used by the key. And then we have the low booms. Roll some rolls. Machine ensemble. Let's see, we're up here. They also have the chromatic, the black keys as well as white keys. Then we have the metals. And so, no black keys this time. Then the uh, <clears throat> the paper duns. Then you have your snares. And your pseudos, surdos. Oops. There they are. Then your tycos. Remember, we only saw a couple of patches of Tycho's last time in the, in the sort of sample patch. But here you have all of them laid out on the white keys. By the way, you can increase the stereo field. There's a stereo width. I sort of like it wide. And then you have your tan tams. On the white keys. And I'm doing all of this with the Hans Zimmer mix close. We haven't, we could um, do the surround or the room or all three together.
The C2 is a roll inverse. And then the last one we have is the Tombex. And again, white keys only. So that pretty much gives you a view of how it's laid out and samples that you've probably not heard played before because they, um, they do a sort of a general overview and they don't get into the nitty gritty of each of the articulations. So I try to keep it as short as possible. Uh, if you like the video, please click or yeah, click on like and, uh, also subscribe to receive updates on new videos, which are coming almost on a daily basis, a variety of topics involving film scoring and composition and modes and chords and scales and a bunch of stuff, all geared towards making music, uh, primarily film scoring. So please subscribe. This is Bill McFadden from Tone Pure Music. And signing off.